think it's Polson. This is unit two, segment six, the final one, friends, final one. Okay, so the last renewable energy option is hydrogen. We are far from making this, um, you know, mass use. But anyway, we have hydrogen fuel and the compounds are forced to release the hydrogen atoms, which we know water has, H2O has two hydrogens. If we split water, electrolysis, they, if we can break it into the hydrogen and the oxygen components. Once we have that broken, there is a separation of charge, friends. Oxygen and hydrogen are oppositely charged. And when you have separation of charge, trigger your physics brain, you have voltage, okay? There are no greenhouse gas emissions or air pollution, so that's a big pro. Water and heat would be the only products. And a con would be that it's very expensive. Um, right now, the infrastructure is not in place. But a promising known fact is that hydrogen is the number one most abundant element in the entire universe. So we have a lot out there that we could potentially use. All right, now with hydrogen, you have a fuel cell um, that is used. So this is a device that has a positive and a negative electrode. And when you have, like I said, the separation of charge, then you have voltage. So you can see in the diagram, you have a hydrogen going in. This has already been split. So electrolysis has already happened and it split the water into its separate hydrogen and oxygen components. So we're thinking hydrogen from fuel source, like a gas station that's pumping hydrogen into the fuel cell. And then the oxygen would come actually from the air itself. Anyway, the two are on opposite sides. So you have um, a flow of charge, which is illustrated right here, and then that flow is, is um, current, okay? So we have, which, oh shoot, <laughs> which is shown here lighting this light bulb. That's to represent the um, current that, that is elicited from the, the voltage or the separation of charge. You don't need to know all the details about the fuel cell. You just need to know that um, what it is and what it's used for. So it's used to produce electricity, and I can show you one, an example of one in class, just a really small one that I have with a little hydrogen car that is um, old and kind of pathetic and it barely moves, but it works, it works. Anyways, it's definitely not widely used yet. It's still in its infant stage of development. Um, couple things to remember. Non-renewables in general are going to be the polluters. I know that we have a couple of examples of the renewables that pollute, but for the most part, it's non-renewables that will pollute. We also know that uh, definitely according to our little activity in class that eventually we will run out, okay? In this closed planet of ours, this closed system planet of ours, we have what we have and that's it. So what we're using is we're using these materials just faster than they can be naturally replaced and so we will run out. Renewables though require new technology, the new development, and so it's costly. There's an upfront cost that's a huge drawback, but we will never run out of these and for the most part they're non-polluting. But friends, most of our electricity and energy that we use today comes from non-renewables by far. My last slide is what can you do about this? So what can you do? Knowing this information, what can you do? Conservation is the protection, restoration, and management of natural resources. So through conservation, um, research can be done to find more efficient and improved methods of resource use or to prolong their use. So think back to our CFL bulb compared to the incandescent bulb. If we can make our appliances more efficient at converting the energy that we want, we will waste less energy. And so we will have, you know, during the time frame in which coal is providing most of our electricity, if we can have a higher, a better efficiency rating of the appliances that we use, we can use less coal, for example. So conservation is always good. Reduce, cut back, cut back what you're using. So choose, um, this again comes in the form of choosing efficient appliances, but also making personal choices, shutting off the lights when you leave the room, leaving those lights off during the day. Um, we can go to hybrid cars, just reuse, reduce the use of, of um, gas, gasoline. We can carpool, we can ride a bike. We can recycle, so we can collect materials that can be broken down and reprocessed. It usually requires less energy, and that's a base-by-base -base situation. So some of them might use more, but 
for the most part, buying recycled materials actually uses less energy than getting starting from the raw scratch material. You are an active citizen. You are an active citizen of Portage, of Michigan, of the United States, and of the world. You, my friend, are a citizen of the world. You have a voting voice. You can keep yourself educated on what are the options out there. Be careful about um, you know, what you read. Make sure you're looking for the science behind what you read. Have an open mind to, to new technologies and new ideas. Um, learn about what subsidies are and where those are located, you know, where those are affiliated with. Understand the acts and the laws, the ones that already exist, the new ones that want to be passed. And remember that you have a voice. And then consider renewable options whenever possible, just in general, is a very good um, option for everybody as a citizen of the world. And I am done, my friends. I am done. And so are you. We'll see you tomorrow in class.